Well, welcome back to People's Baptist Church and the Sunday night service. I hope that you've had a great afternoon and uh, got got your belly full and just uh, just ready to sit down to the Word of God and and to to just feast on it for a little bit, get a little dessert. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. And we'll get started. Father, I thank you so much for your good grace and mercy. I ask, Lord, that you would help us as we come to worship you this morning, I mean, this afternoon, Lord, and to open up your word and to be taught by it. And, Lord, I pray that you'd open up the scriptures to us and let us see some things, Lord, that maybe we haven't seen or are to renew things that we have saw, Lord, I pray, in our lives. We love you. We thank you for what you do for us. I pray that you'd have your will in Jesus' name. Amen. The Beecham is going to be singing for us, I Love to Tell the Story. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and His glory. What a chance we have to tell that old, old story of Jesus and his love. Now, for a few announcements, please remember to pray for your, bull, uh, your prayer list that, that's been mailed out. 
Uh, I hope that you're getting these. If you're not, then you can contact uh, Miss Jeanette and get on the, the mailing list and, uh, and be able to, to receive those. Also, I want to take the time to thank those who worked on the lights and, uh, and cleaning up and just uh, everything that, went in, that was involved in it. Uh, I'm so grateful for what God has done. I can't wait till everybody gets back to see it. And uh, the first thing I, 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 I'm looking for someone to say is, it's too bright in here. And because uh, for so long we've heard, I, I can't see nothing. Now, now <laughs> it'll be on the other side. But uh, that'll be okay. Uh, we'll, we'll get you some, uh, some shades to put on and you can wear your sunglasses or something. Amen. We'll continue to pray for, for those that, uh, that we mentioned this morning, uh, Jacob and his family and, uh, for Austin Gardner and, and his family. Uh, I haven't, uh, I haven't heard anything, uh, as yet concerning Austin, but, uh, please continue to pray for him and, uh, for Amanda, please remember to pray for her and all that she's going through and to get, uh, get, uh, evaluated so that the Lord would open up all the doors necessary and, uh, and give us wisdom concerning the things that need to be done in that. So continue to pray for our, our meeting, our, our set date to, to come back to church June 7th. As we look forward to doing that, there will be no Sunday school that day. And we will be sending uh, out uh, uh, this week a, a list of our recommendations of what, what will be happening during that time and what you can expect when you get here. And uh, that, should be come, that should be going out, I hope, no later than Wednesday we'll get that out in the mail. Uh, this being a holiday, you know, we're all behind, so we'll, we'll just have to, uh, have to wait till Wednesday. But uh, we'll be getting it out sometime Wednesday. So <clears throat> please be in prayer for that as uh, as you're praying and uh, for our our country and for our leaders pray that the lord would give them um, give them grace and uh, give them understanding and give them wisdom beyond their understanding um, and pray for our president because uh, he is he he will be uh, uh, he will be under attack for for saying that uh, the church is a necessary uh, at a, 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 a um, place for people to go. So please be in prayer for, for him and, uh, and pray for, uh, for Sunday. Uh, <clears throat> Sunday the 7th, we'll be having uh, David Wheats is going to be coming and he'll be, he'll be sharing with us how to, um, how to evangelize Jehovah's Witnesses. And he'll be teaching that Sunday morning. And uh, then he'll be teaching again that uh, that Sunday afternoon. So please be a part of that. Come out and uh, and be here. And uh, and uh, if not, please tune in and see because he's going to have some great information. And he's he always does when he comes. But uh, we're looking forward to having him. So please be in prayer for him. He he called me. He was really excited. Uh, about uh, all the things that uh, he's, he, w he was preparing the messages already and praying over them, and he's excited about being able to share with us. So pray for him that the Lord would uh, will give him exactly what we need because the Jehovah's Witnesses, they come to our house. You don't even have to go out and visit them. They'll come to you, and they're definitely in your neighborhood. I can promise you that. So uh, let's, uh, let's pray that we'll learn and be attentive and the good thing is this will be on uh, youtube and you can always go back and watch it over again to be able to to if you see if you think if you miss something you can always go back and and recap that also so remember these things in prayer as you're as you're praying and uh, we're looking forward to the day that we come back now the beachers are going to be singing before the message my jesus i love thee <laughs>
ever I love thee. Well, I love that song. I want to invite you to turn in your Bibles, if you would, to, Je- uh, to John chapter number 10. John chapter number 10. If you remember, in John chapter number 9, there was a, uh, the Lord healed a man. He healed him by uh, giving him his sight. And the whole chapter was, was focused around that one, one healing. But I want you to realize something when we go into chapter number 10. We're, we're in the same place. We're dealing with the same people. It's not that um, chapter number 9 is quit and then we go a couple of months and then it takes up again. No, this is the, this is the same setting that is given to us here. And he is talking to the same group of people. If you'll remember, they, the Pharisees and scribes had taken the young man and had cast him out of the synagogue. And the Pharisees and scribes were seeking to kill Jesus. And then we come into chapter number 10. It says this right here, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door unto the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in the, by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the por- porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name. And he leadeth them out. And when he hath put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger will they not follow, but will, follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of a stranger. This parable spoke Jesus unto them. But they understood not what things they were which he spoke unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again. Verily, verily, I say unto you. I am the door of the sheep. All that ever come. Before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep do not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, uh, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Let's pray. Father, I do ask, Lord, that you'll help us as we look into your word. I pray, God, that you would give us grace. And Lord, that you give me remembrance of things that I've studied, things that have been preached throughout my life. And Lord, that you would give me the recalling of those things to be able to bring them forth today. Lord, I love you and thank you for what you do i do humble myself before you realizing i'm just a man in need of a touch from heaven and i ask these things in jesus name amen being a shepherd was something that was very common in israel the land there was not very uh, agricultural wise It, it wasn't a place that you grew real good crops but there was it was rocky and and desert and and being a sheep herder was very it was very prosperous the sheep were very uh, well kept in that type of atmosphere. Also, it is, uh, if you look in the Old Testament, you'll find out that Abraham, he was a shepherd. Uh, Isaac was a shepherd. Moses was even a shepherd. And David was that great shepherd by which we are real familiar with. But most of all, throughout all the Word of God in the Old Testament, the greatest shepherd that is mentioned in all the Old Testament is the shepherd 
God. God being the shepherd of his people. In Psalms chapter number 23 and verse number 1 says this right here. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalms 77, 20 says, Thou leadest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Psalm 79, 13 says, So we thy people and sheep of thy pasture. Psalm 80, verse number 1 says this right here. It says, Give ear, O shepherds of Israel, thou that leadest uh, Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims shineth forth. Psalms 95, 7 says, For he is our God, and we will be, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. That is given to us in the word of God that, that, that God was the shepherd of Israel. That he was the shepherd of Israel. But I want you to see something because he brings a great reproach against the shepherds that he had in Israel. Those that, that led and those that guided and those that prophesied in that day. In Ezekiel chapter number 34 and verse number 1, I want you to listen to what he says to the shepherds. He says, And the word of the, and the, word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy again against the, the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do not feed, that, that do feed themselves. Shall not the shepherd feed the flock? Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe, and you're clothed with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The disease have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye broke, uh, brought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost. All through this chapter, he brings a reproach against those priests, those, those leaders of Israel, and reproaches them because they are not shepherding God's people. But listen to what he says in verse number 11. In verse number 11 he says, For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, even I will both search my sheep and seek them out. He had set a plan that he would seek out his sheep. And we, if you read down, on down in that verse, you'll find out that he tells us that David will be that shepherd. Well, we know that he's not talking about David because David had, is long passed off the scene. His kingdom has come and gone. He is talking about the seed of David, that one seed. Jesus. In these verses that we have before us, we see him as the good shepherd. The good shepherd. In verse number one, he says, Verily, verily. It's very interesting that he puts that here because he's saying, he's saying, pay attention. This is a truth, a truth here. He says, I say unto you, he that entereth not in the door, in, in, enter not by the door into the sheepfold, climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. We have the picture here of, of a shepherd and his sheep, but it mentions a sheepfold. In the time period that we're talking about here, the towns would have one place that they would have the sheep, and everybody's sheep would be gathered in that place at night. They would, they would be brought into what's called the sheepfold. No telling how many different shepherds were there. 
But they would be there, they would all go in one at a time into the door. And as they went in that door one at a time, the shepherd would examine them. He would check them out. He would see if they had any cuts or if they had any scrapes or if they were limping or if there was anything wrong with them. And he would tend to them. He also declares in, in uh, this chapter that these are his sheep. That he describes Three types, of, uh, three people in this in this uh, parable that we have, or this picture that we have before us. One is a porter, the other are thieves and robbers, and the other is the shepherd. The sheepfold is the place where the sheep is kept. It is interesting that these sheep right here are in a sheepfold, but yet when we get down to chapter uh, verse number sixteen, he says, he says, other sheep have I which are not in this fold. So he, he, this is a specific sheepfold. This is a specific people. Who are these people? Well, they are those of Israel. They are those that are the, of, the, of, the, of, of the group of, of Jews. They are caught up in a, in a place where, where they are being called out of Judaism. And being brought in to his fold. The verse in verse number 16. The other fold that he has would be the Gentiles. Which we know to come about in the life of Peter. I mean Paul. When Paul goes to the Gentiles. And the apostle of the Gentiles. We look in verse number 3. He says. The porter openeth the door. He is that one that keeps the door. That one that, that, that lets the sheep in and out. Only the shepherd is able to bring or to, to get the porter to open the door. That's why the, the thieves must go up and over. They climb in another way because the door is safely kept. Once the sheep are in the fold, there is no way for them to ever be taken out of the fold. They are always in the fold. I like that. I don't know about you. Security is there. The shepherd. I like this right, right here too. It says, to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. The they know that he, he, he says that they hear his voice, but listen to what it says. The shepherd calls them by name. He knows each one of them by name. Out of the multitude of sheep that are in that fold, uh, that may be other shepherd's uh, sheep, he'll call out his one by one, and they'll exit that door. And they'll be able to go out. He leadeth them out. Oh, I'm so grateful that, that the shepherd knows my name. I'm grateful that he called my name when, uh, when I was 19. I'll never forget the day nor the place where he did it. When he called my name. He knows his sheep. He knows us. There's no one that got saved by accident. The Lord called you. He touched your heart. He, he, he made the first effort for you to be drawn to him. He calls us by name. I like this also. That he leads us out. Aren't you grateful that he didn't leave us where we were at. But he brought us out of what we were. For these sheep that are, uh, are, are mentioned here in this setting of, of Judaism, he's, he's, he's bringing them out of that traditional religion into true salvation. For us, he brought us out of the world into his fold. I like this right here. The Bible says that in verse number four, it says that 
his sheep know his voice. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Listen, you know, the, these, these sheep right here, they know his voice. There's no deception mentioned here. Every child of God ought to be able to distinguish the voice of their shepherd. Every child of God ought to be able to distinguish the difference between the Savior's voice and that of a stranger. That's the picture that's given here before us. That the stranger, when he speaks, that the sheep does not hear him, they scatter because they know not his voice. But today we, we live in a society that, that says they know the voice of Jesus, yet they do not follow him. I like this also. Verse number 4 says that he... He, when he putteth them forth, he goeth before them. Aren't you grateful that, that he, before you even get there or have a problem, he's already been in front of you. He's already been there. He's already made your path where, where it is not going to overtake you. He's already planned out your path to be able to go by the, the rivers that are still that you'll be able to drink from. He's already got the meadows picked out that you'll eat from. He's already made the provision for you because he goeth before you. I like that. What care should we have if we're sheep that are, that are literally following our Savior? Because he goeth before us and provideth our need in the way. He doesn't just stop and, 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 and show us the picture of him as the good shepherd. He also reveals himself as the door. Now, he, he, he gives this as, a, as, as the same understanding as we talked about this morning. One direction, one way, one path, one gate. There's not many ways to be able to get into this sheepfold. There's only one. In verse number 7, it says, Verily, verily, he says again to us, A truth, a truth. I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. It's interesting to me that, that every time Jesus brings us to the place where salvation is mentioned, he narrows that path down to one door or one straight way or one narrow gate. He narrows it down to him and nobody else. Ever before is the thieves and robbers who are trying to steal the sheep or to get them out of the fold or to be able to take them and devour them. But he says, no one enters in but by that door. Not many doors, but one door. He says, I am, verse number 9, he says, I am the door, and by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. The direction here is not that of, of, of actually sheep herding or, or, or being a shepherd or, or the, 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 the stall by which they stay in or the door by which they'll enter in, but it's in salvation. He is directing the same people. He is making a statement to those people in chapter number 9 by which were there when he was speaking that you have not been the shepherd that you needed to be. That you have devoured, you are the thieves and the robbers that, 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 are, that are taking and trying to lead the children of Israel astray. He directs to them and says, I am. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. 
He said, any man that enters in this door shall be saved. There's no other way of salvation. Jesus, the only one. He says in verse number nine, the latter part, he says, and shall go in and out and find pasture. What a beautiful picture. That as we go in and out, we're still being provided for. We're, we, we still have right direction. Why? Because we're going in and out. Through this world, we're not going to lose our way if we're His. Through, through this, this journey of life, we're not going to fall in and out of salvation. No, it's, it's a continual, everlasting sealing of a salvation. Once we're in the flock of God, we're His forever. The pastures have, have been provided for us to be able to, to live thereby or to live therein. I can see him as he turns to those Pharisees and scribes that are listening in as he's preaching this message amongst the crowd of people that were there at the time of their second reunion of the blind man. The thieves come not but to steal, to kill, to destroy. I come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundant. There is no life without Christ. We can live this life and have all the riches that this world has to offer, and yet we will never really experience life. Because He is the life of man. Him alone. He is the good shepherd by which cares for his sheep, which knows them by name, which calls them, which they know his voice, which leads them, which provides for them. He is that door, the only door that's, that you're able to enter into that fold. I want you to know that Every time we look into the Word of God, we always come back to the same place. We always come back to the purpose of His life was that man would be able to see Him for who He is. The Pharisees and scribes could not, would not, and denied all He had ever done. But over and over He tells him. I am the light of the world. I am the living water. I am the, I am the, I am the shepherd. I am the door. And yet, they continue to refuse to believe in Him. My question is, and my challenge to you is today, Is he your shepherd? Out of all that you've seen in the Word of God and all that you've read and all that you've heard in testimony and the preaching of the preachers, have you too denied as they did? Or have you received him? When he called you and touched you, did you answer? Can I tell you that door is Jesus. And if you want to be in that flock, you must go through that door and that door alone. Let's pray. Father, I thank you once again for your good grace and mercy towards us. And Lord, I pray, God, that you'll help us as we, as we continue your study and your word. I pray that you would be with those that, that are here listening, Lord. I, I pray that you would 
Give them a hunger to get in your word and to know you. I pray if there be one that's listening that doesn't know you and is not one of your sheep, Lord, that you would touch their heart and call their name. Lord, that they by faith would receive you as Savior. Lord, I love you and thank you for all that you do for us. Bless, I do pray. And help us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Patients are going to sing for us a little as much when God is in it. of God is calling to the harvest calling you. Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. Does the place you're called to labor seem so small and little known? It is great in it and he'll not forget his own little is much when god is in it labor not for wealth or fame there's a crown and you can win it if you go in jesus name are you laid aside from service body worn from toil and care you can still be in the battle sacred place of prayer. Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. When the conflict here is ended and our race on earth is run, He will say if we are faithful, welcome home child well done will this much when god is in it labor not for wealth or fame there's a crown and you can win it if you go in jesus name little is much when god is in it labor not for wealth or fame there's a crown and you can win it if you go in jesus name Amen. I can't wait to that day when he reaps his harvest. Amen. Well, I hope that you'll have a great Memorial Day tomorrow as you honor our veterans and and those who have fought for our country. And I hope that you'll have a great week. I want to invite you to come back on Wednesday and at 7 o'clock. We'll uh, we'll be studying 1 Peter again and uh, looking a little bit more into 1 Peter. So I hope that you have a blessed night and a blessed weekend, and may God bless you.